Well, I knew Jim Whitaker, the producer, for years before this. And I would say about six or seven years ago, I was talking to him on the phone and he said that he was getting on a helicopter in Massachusetts and he was going to go, he was looking around. I said, well, what are you looking at? And he said, well, I'm trying to do this movie. And he told me the story. Um, and I said, that sounds great. Um, and, you know, for the next six years, he just stayed at it. And it's what it takes to get a movie made sometimes. And, and he's a great producer and he um, finally got it done. Um, that was the first time I heard about it. And and uh, he didn't tell me in all detail, but it's a, it's a great story. I sort of like history, and, 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 and the thing that first hooked me was, you know, it's how this all came to be. Um, at the beginning of World War II, uh, German U-boats were, they were sinking our ships, commercial ships, they are just sinking everything. And so we couldn't figure out how to get around them. So the oil companies, the ship companies, they started building uh, kind of poorly made, very inexpensive tankers because they, the odds of them getting sunk were so high and they thought, let's not put a lot into them. Um, then we got a handle on the U-boats. We kind of figured those out, figured out how to find them, how to defend against them. And um, there were, so there were a whole fleet of these very poorly made oil tankers that survived the war. I'm trying to play um, this, this one part of this real person in this moment, which to me meant, you know, just trying to depict somebody who has to sort of step into the role of, of being a leader and, um, and to save people and to sort of, and to manage people and to sort of put aside all of his own, uh, his own concerns and just kind of serve this boat and, um, and to do it without any training or warning. I love period movies, and I love movies that are set in Massachusetts just because I grew up here, and, and, and I, feel, I feel really connected to the place. Um, I think that it's a story that I would have been connected to anyway. It would have been appealing to me. I did do making this movie had it been set in Florida. Um, it might have been a lot warmer in Florida as well, but uh, that would have been nice. Um, but here we are in, in Massachusetts, and, and it's great to be home. You know, as an actor, you travel so much, and you're on the on the road and you know you get kids your wife and your kids they get sick of coming to see you in Louisiana and in Calgary and stuff and they just so to be able to come here and see their grandmother and to be in a place that they know makes that part of the experience for me a lot easier um, and uh, it's definitely a place that I'm happy being in and and uh, and I know I know well he finds himself in a situation that is very foreign to him because um, he's a guy who he's, he's he's in the engine room. He's an he's an engineer. He doesn't come out of there. He doesn't have to interact with the rest of the ship that much. He never goes on on deck, and um, he certainly doesn't have to make decisions that affect the lives of everybody else. Um, but he's, he was a really smart guy. He was a thoughtful guy, um, and uh, he knew what he was doing on the ship. So, you know, he was bringing uh, a lot of knowledge and, and experience to bear on this situation on the one hand. On the other hand, it, it was um, something that he, it was a totally foreign situation to him, just having to deal with all these guys and the different personalities, especially in this incredibly emotionally heightened situation where everyone feels like they're about to die and, and they're panicked and they're making decisions, irrational decisions, emotional decisions, and, and they're all fighting with each other. Um, and so I think that, you know, it's one of those things where he wasn't comfortable doing it totally, sort of stepping up and, and, and leading all these men, but um, he had no other choice.